Hey everybody! Today I'm reviewing my 9mm M&P shield. So first off I'll safety check it for you to show that it is unloaded for filming today. The M&P shield is a striker fired single stack polymer framed pistol from Smith & Wesson that is made in the USA and it's available in both a 9mm and a 40. I've been carrying it every day and I've been doing a lot of shooting with it every week since I got it in April, which is when it was released at the 2012 NRA show. And I'd like to start out by saying that I really like this handgun. It's already my new favorite concealed carry pistol. And in fact, a friend of mine who just loves his Walther PPS and has carried that for several years has actually decided to convert to carrying the shield as well, which I think is pretty cool. So a lot of you already know that I also own the Smith & Wesson M&P Compact 9mm, which I love, and I have done a review on that previously. I'll go ahead and show you guys. It is also unloaded for filming today. Now the M&P Compact is pretty hard for me to conceal on my small frame without wearing a jacket or a hoodie since it's bulkier and it's a double stacked magazine, which is why I actually purchased the shield. The shield is on the left here. And the shield is about a quarter of an inch thinner than the compact. And it is a little bit taller, which I'll give the dimensions in a chart later, but it still actually conceals better on me because it is thinner. And then the shield is also shorter overall, which I'll try to show there. Now, a lot of you have asked me which one I would recommend between the two, and both of these M&P pistols are great, and I'm actually keeping both of mine because they each serve a different purpose for me. The M&P Compact has a higher capacity, and it also has ambidextrous options that the shield doesn't, so I'm going to keep it for courses and home defense. But since the shield is more concealable, I'm going to use that for daily carry. But both of these M&P pistols are great. They're very comfortable to shoot, they're extremely accurate, and they both fit my small hands very well. Now, there are two different magazine options for the shield, and it comes with one of each. Right now, I've got the seven rounder in it, which sits flush, and that actually fits my hands perfectly. Aside from the seven rounder, there is also an eight round extended magazine, which has a sleeve on it, and the eight rounder fits my hand like that. The 40 caliber shield has mags that hold one less round in each and I conceal carry with the 7 rounder because there's a little bit less to poke out from my clothing but it is nice to have the 8 rounder for the range or as a spare mag. Um, I do wish that the 8 rounder had a solid extension instead of this sleeve on it just because when I drop the mag on the ground during reloads the sleeve pops up a little bit. It really hasn't been an issue, but I have made a habit to push it down tight before using it again. And I do want to mention, I did buy some extra mags for my shield, and all three of the seven rounders that I have are very difficult to seat into the gun when they're fully loaded and when the slide is closed. But for some reason, my eight rounder is easy to seat when it's fully loaded, and I don't know why. But I did go ahead and load up one of my seven rounders with snap caps today to show you how hard it is for me to get in when the slide is closed. It should not be this hard. But I don't know if that's just a problem with the seven round mags that I have, but I just wanted to show that for you guys today. As for the parts on the shield, it does have a fixed back strap, so you cannot change it out to a different size like you can on the full size or the compact MMPs. But I don't mind because the grip is more slim since it's a single stack and it's very comfortable for me to hold and it does fit my small hands very well. For sights, it's got steel three dot sights and it does have serrations on the rear sight to help cut glare. It actually has the same sights as my M&P Compact does, which I do love and I shoot well with them. They're just a little bit narrower on the shield.
really windy out here today, so if my target hadn't been moving, I might have had a bit tighter group. But it's not bad. The slide and the barrel are both made of stainless steel, and they have a black melanite coating. And at this time, all the shields come with a safety lever, which is only on the left side of the frame for right-handed shooters. So it is not ambidextrous like it is on the M&P Compact. And I usually like having a safety because it gives me added comfort since I do carry around in the chamber. But the shield safety, as you can see, is very small and it's actually hard for me to use. So I don't actually use it. The good thing about it though is that it is there if you want it, but it's out of the way if you don't. And it doesn't stick out much from the frame, so you can't hit it accidentally because it's got a very positive engagement. It snaps very hard on and off. Also, you can work the slide with the safety on, so that's really nice. But instead of a small safety like this, I think I would prefer no safety at all or a safety like on my compact M&P because I can easily access that one with my thumb. Smith & Wesson said they might release a model of the shield without a safety in the future, depending on demand, but they aren't sure yet, so the safety is currently a standard feature on the shield. The slide release here is also not ambidextrous on the shield. It is only on the left side. On the M&P Compact, it is on both sides. Honestly, that doesn't matter to me, though, just because I have trouble accessing it with my little thumbs, and I don't use it when I reload anyway. I just use that whenever I want to lock the slide back. Um, the magazine release here is not reversible to the other side, like it is on the compact M&P or the full size, but I do love that I can access it easier with my small hands since the grip is more slim. I have a harder time hitting the mag release on my M&P Compact, even with the smallest backstrap on it, so I do like this magazine release. Also, there's no magazine disconnect on my shield, so it can still fire without the mag, which is a feature I really like. As you can see, it's written on the side here, capable of firing with magazine removed. Um, a Smith & Wesson representative did tell me they will be releasing models, though, that do have a magazine disconnect. Let's see, I also love the loaded chamber indicator window on the top here, just like on my M&P Compact. And you can see a glint of brass in there whenever there is a round in the chamber. And I also want to mention that the trigger is nicer on the shield than it is on my M&P Compact. And the, the reset is much more crisp and it's very audible. You can hear there the reset. Very crisp reset. On the MNP Compact, the reset is sloppier. There's no real crisp reset on it. The shield can be disassembled two different ways, so I'll go ahead and show you both ways, starting with the way they recommend in the manual, which is the safer method because it doesn't involve pulling the trigger. So first, you take out your magazine. Then you lock back your slide and make sure that the gun is clear. Inside is a little yellow lever called the sear deactivation lever, which you have to press down as far as it'll go into the magazine well. For the M&P Compact, they say to use the frame tool that comes inside the grip to press that down, but the shield doesn't have a frame tool, so the manual recommends using a little screwdriver to press that down. My pinkies are small, and it's easy for me to just catch my fingernail on that to pull it down. So that's what I do, and you can see that it is very visible with that yellow on it. Then you rotate your takedown lever, and the takedown lever is not spring-loaded like it is on the M&P Compact, which is nice, so you don't have to keep holding it. And then you just rack your slide to release your slide stop, and you can slide your slide gently off the frame, and take out your spring and your barrel. 
And for reassembly, you just gently put your barrel back in. Gently put your spring back in. Be sure to put it in straight and catch it on the little groove in there. Line it up very carefully with the frame and gently slide it back on. Lock it back with the slide stop and then you can rotate your takedown lever back up. Now I just want to show you here that you can see that the steer deactivation lever on the inside is still pressed down. When you put your magazine in, that's actually what presses that lever back up. So as you can see, now it's back up. And then you can rack your slide to make sure that it's functioning properly and reset your trigger. The other method of disassembly is more what people are used to. It's very similar to a Glock because it involves pulling the trigger. And for that method, you just take out your magazine. Check to make sure that the gun is clear. Point the gun in a safe direction and pull the trigger. Then you just rotate your takedown lever and the slide easily slides off the frame as you can see there. And for reassembly, again, you just gently line it back up, lock it back with the slide stop, then you can rotate your takedown lever back up, and with that pulling the trigger method, your sear deactivation lever is still up on the inside, so you don't have to put the mag back in. Here's a chart that I made to compare the MMP shield with some other 9mm handguns. I kind of put it in the middle because on the left I've got the M&P Compact, which is a double stacked magazine, and on the right the Walther PPS and the Ruger LC9 are both single stack 9mm like the Shield, and I thought they were pretty comparable. I just put the M&P Compact on here to give you guys the size comparison basically. The Shield is a quarter of an inch thinner than the Compact, which is great for concealability, although it is slightly taller. Um, you can see that the barrel length is obviously shorter, and they both have a 6.5 pound trigger pull, which I measured using my Timney trigger pull gauge, and it tended to show about 6 and 3 quarter pound pull for the shield. In comparison with the single stack 9mm, you can see that the shield is priced very competitively, and it is a little bit lighter and thinner than the PPS. I think that the PPS is a very strong competitor with the shield because it's a very great concealed carry pistol and I did a review on it previously. And in that video I did show a size comparison between it and the shield. So I'll go ahead and put a link below this video if you want to see that review. And in terms of the Ruger LC9, that is the smallest and the cheapest on the list here of all three. But I haven't actually gotten the chance to shoot one of those yet. For my ammo testing, I put 1,020 rounds through the shield, and it really was awesome. I tried all different types of ammo, all different brands of ammo, and I didn't have any feeding issues, jams, or malfunctions. And the shield is rated for plus P ammo, and I used two different types of plus P in it. Although I did clean the shield when I first got it, I did put all 1,020 rounds through it without cleaning it again. So as you can see here, the feed ramp got extremely dirty, so I did end up cleaning it. And I also want to show you guys that my shield came with some rough machine marks on the feed ramp, so I'm going to have it polished. But 
Even with the rough marks, it still functioned flawlessly through all my shooting, and it actually outperformed the Walther PPS in round count, so it ran longer without cleaning it. I shot 565 rounds through the PPS before I did my review on it, but I did continue to shoot it, and eventually it started to have some feeding problems with cheap 115 grain ammo, so I had to clean it. Now, as much as I love my MMP Compact, I really am loving my shield even more. I carry it every day. It's my favorite concealed carry pistol, and it's just incredibly reliable, extremely comfortable. Fits my small hands really great, and I really do think it's one of the best options out there right now for single stack concealed carry handguns, so definitely check it out. And I know there are several holster options already available for it, so I'll be reviewing some of those later. So thank you guys for watching today, and I'll see you later.